I said I'd do it and it's time to do it. We've got a new haircut, new job, same shirt. I made the promise that I was going to play the first game ever completed, so we're gonna do it today. For those who haven't seen the, the video, I think it was um me Mega SG one. I presented this game, which was Aladdin on the SNES, the Capcom version that I said was the best version. So I'm going to show you it today. And because I believe we should challenge our own preconceptions, I have also purchased Aladdin on the Sega Mega Drive. But that is for another day. Today is the day that we play Aladdin on the SNES. Right, hello and um, welcome to another Let's Play. Right now I'm going to play Aladdin on the SNES. This is the first game ever completed. It's a game full of nostalgia for me and my brother and my sister. So I just thought I'd give it a quick Let's Play. I could, I'm not going to do a long play in the sense that I'm not going to collect all the items you can. But I'm just going to go through the levels fairly fast. And just tell you a little bit about it. When I say getting all the stuff... What I could do is um, I could go and get all the rubies, I could go and get all the emeralds and, and things like that. So these are the emeralds, they're the rubies, but I'm not going to, I'm going to fire through. And um, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy it. So I got a lot of uh, nice comments on my last little video as well, which was good. Um, both verbally and on Facebook and on the, um, and I, I think one or two on the, on the, comments itself on the video itself on the little open in the box thing so she thought that was quite funny so i'm happy with that one um so yeah thanks for that thanks for the support um, again i'm playing without sound so there's a little bit of an element of a lack of atmosphere on this but it's purely just so i can record a bit cleaner so that thing i've just collected there that gives you a bonus level, which is awesome. And I forgot to collect my parachutes for some reason, but I'll just crack on without them. So this isn't a perfect playthrough, as I'm saying. I'm not going to get those rubies at the top or anything like that. Partly because I think it just take too long, and we don't want an hour video or whatever, do we? So as a kid on this bonus level, what I never wanted was the um, I never wanted the star. But as I got older, I realised the stars are actually quite good because it gives you a credit, which is basically a continue. Um, but as you get better and better at this game, you don't really need them at all. But have I got that? Oh yeah. Oh, I thought I had a genie for a minute. So that's the credit, it's basically another continue, I think. And I can't remember if I can get the um, the parachutes on this level. I think I can. But I'm not 100%. Yeah, parachutes. Right, so this is... A, obviously, there was two of these released at the time. This is not only one of my favourite games on the SNES. It's also one of my favourite movies. And... Like, you get to do funny things, like... If he comes down now... What do I have to annoy him? Yeah. So you get to boot him in the face like that, which I've always found funny. And obviously, you get these... Um, I said I wasn't going to collect them, but I just did not have it. You get these parachutes and that. But the apples are the main thing that I love. So you just launch them in the face, obviously, on the Mega Drive version. I keep saying obviously. I don't know why it's not that obvious if you haven't played them. Um, on the Mega Drive version, you get a knife, which is stupid, in my opinion. I don't know whether it was the Sega trying to be edgy or some 
fucking shit like that, I don't know. But, um, yeah, you get a blaze and not at one point throughout the entire game, throughout the entire uh, movie, does Aladdin hold a knife? I don't. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Well, I don't know if you saw that on your screen, but it's just sort of crashed on mine, which is great. And this is one of the problems I'm, I'm having. For some reason, when I'm recording these SNES games, they're great quality, I think. But I've got a lag between... Which doesn't bother you, because I always edit it and change it. But there's a lag between the music... Um, between the music and the gameplay. And it's because of the frame rate. And I don't know what's changed it. For some, I've been told to record in 60 frames per minute. But on the Algeto HDSD60S, it only lets me do 50 frames per minute. So I don't know if it's computer there. I don't know what it is. Um, but it's an issue I've got when I'm recording, so if anyone wants to give any advice on that, I'm happy to receive it. But it's something that doesn't happen with um, with that bad boy. You can't even fucking see it. I'll show you later. It's something that doesn't happen with my Mega SG. When I record on my Mega SG, there's no lag between the sound and, and the gameplay footage. But when I'm recording on the original hardware on the SNES, I do get that. I also didn't have that problem when I was recording on my PS3 to play Final Fantasy, so it seems to be a bit unique to the SNES, and I think it may be because it's not simply the SNES it's going through. I'm going through the. I'm going through another bit of. I'm going through an upscaler as well, and that may have something to do with it. Ah, stupid. <laughs> was eyes there. So what I like about this as well is it's relatively true to the um, to the film as well. Apart from like there's one bit where it's not in the film. I don't know if it's in the original story. I've never read the original Aladdin, but I assume it's not just. I assume Aladdin is like a really ancient story, so it may be in the ancient story. Um, but there's a bit later on that on the way back from the Cave of Wonders. A boo falls off the magic carpet and ends up in this pyramid, and then you have to go in a pyramid and save a boo. Obviously, that's not in the story, but it's in the game for some reason. I'm not quite sure why that is. If anyone knows why that is, let me know. And if I ever do a comparison between the two Aladdins, I'll probably look into that because I think that could be. See, it's it's quite difficult, I think, doing a comparison because some people absolutely love the Aladdin on the Mega Drive. And some people absolutely love this Aladdin, and they won't hear that the other one's better. But objectively, looking at it, this is a fucking better game as far as I'm concerned. Now, the obvious ones are gonna, they're gonna be like, oh well, you had the original animators on, you had the original Disney animators on the Mega Drive version. True, I prefer the animation on this. So you know, it's it's one of those. And the music, I prefer on this. Others will prefer on the other one. And how much of that is dance nostalgia? I do not know. So, to look at it objectively, what do you look at? Do you look at the gameplay? Do you look at the graphics? Do you look at the music? Or do you look at the storyline? Um, or do you do a quantitative census where you ask people um, who've played both games, which is your favourite? So, that's the researcher and me looking at that one. And then I'm thinking, should I just do a little bit about the history of the games and then just play them? Or should I just do two Let's Plays? We'll see, we'll see. I've got lots of ideas. So this is the first boss that you fight, and this is the fella in the, um... oh you dickhead. It goes off his head there. And this is the shop owner who goes, I hope you're going to pay for that. And he tries to pretend that. That Jasmine's crazy, we don't know when she's the princess at the time. Look at Boo, he's dying for a fucking... Time for a fight at the top there, eh? Oh man! Stupid! I'll try and make him do that mad thing where he turns both ways. Oh no, it's too late, I've killed him. Right, basically, there's a bit where you can like swipe both ways if you stand above him. So here's Jasmine. I have not got an alcoholic beverage this time. I have a the other bit of That's another cool thing about this game. Is it's got this password save state. So when I was a kid, 
and I was learning the game and figuring out. I used to write these down. <laughs> I remember not being able to spell genie. <laughs> so I'd write them down in this little um, booklet I got from the post office near us. And if you want to read this, um, play the game. Highly, highly recommend this game. So a while ago as well, they, this is a game that's like a proper comfort one. I'll just come back to this now and again and just whack it on and play it for 45 minutes or half an hour, whatever it is. I've never tired myself doing it. And um, and just love it and get this immense feeling of satisfaction when I've completed it. Because it's once you've played it over and over again. I think it's like... Um, game sack always go on about is it Shinobi, you know, it's Castlevania. Um, that they play and they just know them off by heart and, and things like that. This is the game that I know off by heart. Like every little nook and cranny of it. But again, it's it's if you want to see a long play, there's, there's long plays online. It's not my, really my thing, long plays. Um, for fuck's sake, Keith. Yeah, I know every nook and cranny of this game. So I get fucking hit by the bats. It's so little things like that when you hit the bat and it twirls around and and stuff, and then you got useless things like you can get the meat and then there's a bread thing, but I don't know. This is the weirdest enemy ever, I still don't know what the fuck it is. But it's dead now, anyway. Another little bonus. So just to show you the, the secret things in this game, I do know. But I'm not grabbing them all. It's not Pokemon, we don't have to catch them all. Ah, oh, could have got a hat trick then. I think with these emeralds as well, once you get so many, you get an extra life. Oh, you get an extra heart. And I can't for the life of me. This is the randomest enemy ever. You fight him once, he respawns right there. He's not. I don't think he's in the in the film either. He's just like randomly just appears there. At least those knives are. Always fascinated me this bit. All this gold in here should be a dragon eye, or maybe I just watched too much of the Hobbit. That was another thing I'm thinking about doing on the channel as well. I'm thinking, I don't know how many of these reads, I'm, I'm a big reader, I'm a bibliophile, I absolutely love it. So I was thinking about um, about doing something with me top, there's, there's so many books, so many games and all the rest of it. So I'm going to do like my top five pieces of fiction, I think, and just talk to you about some of the books maybe. Which doesn't sound so exciting, but hopefully it will be. As I said, it's a diary for me, innit, so... Oh! Yeah! <laughs> Got the genie, and I can't remember what this gives you. That was like my target, is it? Yes, so I've got an extra heart. Really, that's quite underwhelming, but I've got an extra heart now because of that. So, yeah. I think if I had the extra heart, I'd get an extra heart, then an extra life as well, but there you go. This can be a deceptively difficult level because there's loads of bits you can slip up, and if you fall in the water, basically, you can't hold on to the side of the log, so you just fall in. So in that sense it's deceptively difficult. But it shouldn't be. I don't know why I get that because there's there's no need, it's just purely out of habit. I always think this thing looks like a bit of a weird dick coming out the top. Like a little chode emerging from the top. I don't know why they put that in. But this, that, this, in fact, that's another thing. It's not full of repetition. This game, it's not the, the enemies. There's like there's so much love gone into this game that like you can just tell because the enemies are different on each level. There's little um, idiosyncrasies on every bit. There's barely any glitch. I've never detected the glitch. I someone will come and give me an essay on the glitches in this game, but I really can't detect any glitches whatsoever. It's just a really well-rounded done. Like little things that don't need to be in, like that there. That stuff that doesn't do anything that's just for artistic flair and it looks beautiful. And it's I don't know. I just think it looks that little fucking emerging 
tiny dick that doesn't work gives credence to the dick that does. Like that little island at the back. I just think it's beautifully done, this game. Infidels. Abu, no! This makes me want to watch it as well. Sick. It's the only, um, bastard. It's the only, like, uh, sequel that I've ever wanted to watch as well. And that's Return of Jafar. I remember seeing it advertised on a VHS years ago. Here's a secret for you. Now, you know, one said it was scary because if I land on the wrong thing, and there's no. Luckily, there's a log. But if there hadn't been a log, I would have just died. Okay, there's a bit of repetition that little island that I like is there again, but it's a 16 bit game, so fucking there you go, deal with it. So yeah, so all the hearts I've got there, one's from the genie, one's because I collected over 100 emeralds, and, one, and uh, I think two because I got those heart things. Oh, I love this bit. Abu! No! Infidels! Now, <clears throat> what we're approaching are two levels. Two fire levels and a second fire level I was stuck on for what seemed like an eternity as a kid. It can't have been so I'd play up to this level and then I could just get stuck on it, play up to it and then I'd die and I have to start again. Um, <clears throat> until I figured it out. And our Amy still hasn't figured it out. I don't know if our Jack has, but last time I played this game with our Amy and Jack, I remember them giving me the handset and I had to complete this level. I'm sure they can, because they both got the game. But, um, yeah. So it, I think it was the first one where I put so much fucking effort into it. And then that like reward you get. It's not this level, this is a relatively simple one. It's the next one. Oh, I'm gonna give a shout out to a friend. Oh, Jordan Fawcett. Jordan messaged me the other day, uh, asked me to go for a pint, and I said, sorry mate, I'm skint at the minute, and he said, you can't afford the coffee, and I was like, okay, fuck you, Jordan. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> yes, of course, I can afford the coffee, but it will not just be a coffee, it will be a coffee, and then do you wanna go for a pint? And then all the rest of it. So I'm trying to save up, got some, I got bills, I gotta pay, and I hated that. Absolutely hated that song until us. No, don't tell, don't tell that story. Um, and <laughs> until it was in. Uh, I gotta make sure everybody eats until I saw it on something else that made me laugh. The only crap thing about doing these Let's Plays is the fact that I'm doing it without the music. Because I love the music on this game. Oh no. Oh no! A T-Rex! That's our little Henry. You want to miss? Because I'm working nights at the minute. Oh yeah, I've got me a qualified teacher status, which I'm absolutely... Why, why am I doing that? I said I wasn't going to do that. I've got me qualified teacher status, which I'm buzzing about, so I can get a job as a teacher. And it'll be good. All I've chosen to do... Um, Supplying personal tutoring this year while we've all got other stuff going on with the family. Um, but yeah, well, I've got this job in the warehouse. The boss, apart from our Henry, keeps arriving and I have to go to work so I can't play with him and I'm devastated because he's me, little man, and I keep getting lots of different um, things, figures, and that. And um, and yeah, I go away and I come back and my room's just turned upside down because he's been playing with all my figures. But he's allowed, he's just allowed. Keeps coming in and looking up at me, um, Ninja Megazord. I'm going, can I play with the lion, please? And I'm with the heart, so I'm to bear. So I just let him do it. And I'm like, oh, no. No. Not without my supervision, little man. But I've got him all these, um, flip head Power Rangers that I used to have when I was a kid, so. He's not hard to play. Let's see if we can get uh, the genie for the second time. I don't think I will. Because I've pressed that randomly there. Heart, maybe? Oh, 
No. Two up? No. Extra credit. Which you don't really need unless you're dying. But hey, I've got five credits anyway. Alright, so this next one here is the level that watched me die in it because I've said I've, you know, I, I, um, I mastered this. And basically, what I did, it, it's quite a difficult level for a lot of people, is um, there's a temptation to go really close to the front. And if you go really close to the front, you can't see what's in front of you and you're going to die. And also, if you go really far back, you're going to get killed by the wave of flame. So it's about positioning yourself right and not flying into that either. So yeah, there you go. This easy level, which I just told you about. So this one, for all these various things I couldn't do as a kid until I, well, I want to say mastered it, but you've just seen me die on it. I'm not talking to you for a minute because I just want to get this done. There you go. So yeah, I deliberately died then just to show you how easy it is, that's it. But for, for like what seemed like years, it wasn't, it was probably a couple of days, I just could not beat this level at all. And then um, and our Amy and Jack couldn't beat it either. And then I learned how to beat it. And then the rest of the game was fairly simple, but that I think is the hardest level in the game. Hence the only one I've died on so far. But usually I get through that no problem. <gasps> we don't believe you. Maybe I don't. I do. And then you are treated by getting through the hard level with our Amy's favourite level. Amy's my sister, by the way. Which you probably figured out. Um, which is the genie one, so I'd always be given the hard levels, then she'd take over on the genie one because she loves it. But I'm not really surprised because the music's just sick on it and it's just a fun level. But you'll find on a lot of the best games on systems and stuff that people always talk about the Disney ones because they tended to get them right, I feel. No, you, you had like um, The Lion King, which is notoriously a difficult game, but it depends on you playing them. Like, my brother-in-law, our Amy's husband, Andre, Andre the Giant, he's huge. Um, he, he loves that Lion King game on Sega, Sega Mega Drive, and you can just complete it really easy. But you forget, because it becomes finger memory, you forget the difficulties um, when you in were initially playing them as a kid. Come on! Oh, you! Oh, oh my god, the easiest bit! Oh! Yeah, you, it becomes really easy, these games. Oh, there we go. No excuse on that. I wasn't even talking to you. I just slipped off it. I slipped off an easy bit. I was going to say to you, the clouds are the easiest bit. And um, if you die repeatedly on that, because the cards are quite difficult to get past, it'll, um, it'll usually just give you loads of those clouds so it's easier for you. And I just fell off one of the clouds. That might be the first time I ever fell off a cloud. Although, you know, obviously clouds are just water vapor, so you'd fall off a cloud all the time. What's well, a game, innit? Genie's lamp. Anything, anything can happen in the genie's lamp. Mr. Aladdin, sir, do my pleasure, please. That'll be out of sync with the video because I can't hear it. Ta da Level done. <laughs> I love the way the faces change and the balloons as well. Take your order, Charlie. 
So I hope yous are all doing well. Um, we were nearing the end of lockdown and now for various reasons in the northwest at least they seem to be wanting to put us back on it. But little things like you can see you can't see your friends and family. But you can go basically anywhere where they've got a card reader. Well, hey oh. People voted for it. Has anyone also noticed the massive amount of censorship on Facebook at the minute? So I can't insult me mates in a joking way anymore. Cause it's like I called me mate Jenna the other day. I was like, she put up a really emotional post, like about friends and stuff like that. And I went, piss off you Les, piss off your dyke, or something like that. And then I like with a smiley face and a joke, and it was obviously a joke. And then I was against, I got a thing, like a warning that I'm against Facebook community standards. I was like, what? Ah, oh. so, yeah. I'm reading 1984 as well, so everything's like stuck on my head. Oh, oh, no. <gasps> there you go, that makes up for me falling off the cloud. He's a big uh, Kiss fan. It's the genie. He loves Gene Simmons. Anyone who doesn't do anyone who doesn't understand that, do your fucking research, man. These are a really annoying enemy. As you see when you fight the penultimate boss, when you fight Jafar in his like sorcerer form, the biggest pain in the ass are those random pots with wings. You don't often make some weird enemies, like it's quite a cool way you died though. I love the way um, when you land on these, the little the, the way the face changes and the little smile and all the details in the animation is just awesome. I mean, this is one of my favourite games, if not my favourite game, on my favourite system in the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm only gutted because I can't hear it, but, you know, I suppose when I watch it back I'll be able to hear it, I'll be happy. I hear myself singing out a tune with it because it's in. Love the faces change on these boxes as well. <laughs> See, it's just layered with little things. It's It's been made with so much love, this game. Well done, Capcom. Hats off, Capcom. And then Street Fighter as well, when you play that, oh, mate. So, someone put something up a while ago, like, what, who's your favourite? Um, what was it? It was Capcom, and then... Konami. Konami, or Konami. And Capcom, who's the best? And it was GameStack who put that up. And it's, it's just Capcom. Simple as, they're amazing. Now... Konami are responsible for my favourite game ever, which is um, well, my favourite game in series ever and probably my favourite game ever actually is um, Metal Gear Solid um, although Metal Gear Solid isn't my favourite game ever, that's that's for another episode though so what was I saying then yeah, but the, like, the way they treated it, you Kazima and all that but that wasn't that wasn't it. I think just the quality of games. They make some excellent titles, like you know. But yeah, Capcom are just a fantastic. I don't know if they're a fantastic company. They could have sweatshops all over the world for all I know. I don't do any research as well. But in terms of the the product and the games they produce, is this? I does do my head in all the time. By the way, why can't we in this world that we live in, right, where we can produce such excellent things, and there is a place for competition where you can get the best out of it and I'm, I'm, I'm more about cooperation and competition massively but why do we have to have such greedy bastards amazon is a really good product for instance it works it, it yeah it's innovative but the fella's like a fucking dragon sleeping on all his gold and everyone in the works you know, so, oh, it's just it's horrible just be a good fucking human man why can't you be a good human well i don't know you you'd be different if you were ever in that position now fucking wouldn't I'd probably never be in that position because the competition would be brutal twats like that and I'd want to pay me staff a living wage. You know, there we go. It's like, 
my flat at the minute. My idea is because I think we're going to have shit pensions. Oh, incidentally, this is the um, this is the level I'm talking about, where which isn't in the film, where a boo has um has fell off the magic carpet, and you have to go and get him in a pyramid. So I've never researched whether it's in the um, the historic story or not. Oh, when your enemies get better, like you can fire two things now. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, so. I think our pensions are going to be shit basically because the government just wants the taxes forever and I've got no issue paying tax, you know, I prefer to have a say over what my tax went on. So I've always thought like if you got to pick how many, you know, you know it would be interesting to see like as a guide if you could say right I want loads of me money to go to the NHS, right I want loads of me money to go to um, to social security, I want loads of me money to go to um, the armed forces or what. It'd be interesting to see that. I imagine that the armed forces would be absolute and, and law and because we're such a right wing country, um, conditioned to be a right wing country, that the, we'd have this ridiculous situation where the police and the armed forces have got an absolute fortune. Um, the NHS, hopefully, is still a loved institution, would have that, but people would seriously be struggling when it comes to social security because of shows like um, Benefit Street and things like that. Although, to be fair, people take the piss out of the system, but not just poor people, rich people take the piss out of the system through not paying their taxes. So, anyway, yeah, my me, me point is I think in an actual democracy, we should have a bit of control over that, at least to say. And then, if everyone, you could sit, hold the government to account and say, so why. If we've indicated that we want to spend on this and not war, we don't want to spend money on war. And no, we don't want to spend money on the interest, on a loan, find another way of doing it. Right. At least what they could be held to account like that, but anyway, it's another matter. So what was I fucking saying before? I forgot my Billy Conley brain has just gone off what I was saying. Um Oh, it was another political thing. I forgot it. I'll watch it back and tell you in the next episode, whatever it was. Um I can't remember. Do me, I didn't that now, because I want to remember what it was I was saying. There you go, I'll just concentrate on the game. Oh yeah, so Jordan, who else was I talking about? So Jordan, we will go for a drink soon. Tom, I love ya. Stop working a different fucking shift pattern to me, you twat. I want to see ya. Um, oh, and... What else was I going to say? Michael, you're the brilliant birthday where you are. Steve, well done, your new house. I need to bring you something. In fact, I'll bring you something today. And I'll bring your mum a present today as well. Um, and what else? Happy 50th birthday to me dad, which is on Monday. And and I've got another piece of meat there, which is making me better, which is really weird. Aunt I think I said something about that as well. You said that um, when he was being a meathead. With the, um, he didn't actually eat that much meat, but he was told to say he was by the industry um, and it, like the sponsors and stuff. But Olympic a athletes generally had the plant, uh, the, the original Olympic athletes um, had, and gladiators and that had a plant based diet. But uh, anyway, that's that's a completely different thing. Uh, if you want to eat meat, fucking eat meat, enjoy it, that's great. Um, but it's, it's funny because. <laughs> I think, the, again, the game sack, developing game sack highlights something in European games that, um, that, like, there's trickles of water that kill you on lots of different games. But I've noticed as well that on this, there's always, like, bits of meat that save your life, and it's just weird. Piss off. This level as well reminds me of, have you ever played Mickey's Wild Adventures? There's a level in that where it really reminds me of, I don't know why. Right, here we go, and we have saved the boo. Oh, we will save a boo when I hit him with an apple. Or when I land on him. Come on, zombie, a boo. There's a picture somewhere that they got me record of achievement to find it, but we had World Book Day and I went in dressed as um, Aladdin and I had Benny Boxer, which I haven't gotten, I'm absolutely traumatised and I'll never get him again. It was like one of my original, I lost two of my original teddies, I had one called Wolf Dog, 
which was a blue little fluffy dog and I lost him in the park and I was absolutely dead. It was my first loss, genuinely, it wasn't losing an animal. It was, my first loss was losing that teddy. Um, and then Benny Boxer, I lost him later, but I had lots of other box of teddies. Um, so yeah, oh, this is an awesome level. I might be quiet on this and let you actually, no, I won't, I'll just, I'll just talk, talk throughout it. But I think this is a beautiful level in the game. Oh yeah, World Book Day, so when's was Aladdin, and I thought it's a book because my mum used to buy us all the um, Disney books, don't know if anyone saw those, um, and yeah, it was, I just loved it, I'd like, I'd like to get an original, read the actual story of it, I love the music on this, and I think I'm just going to be quiet and appreciate it, and ruin it by collecting emeralds, so you'll have a ding each time. I think it's just a beautiful concept, this level. No enemies, just a bit of relaxation and collecting stuff. I don't know what, I don't know if there's a turn for a level like this, but I love it. Someone will be frantically shown at the screen. It's a filler level! I don't care. I don't care in the slightest, comrade. It's a beautiful filler level. Really well animated. Gives you a chance to get extra hearts by collecting emeralds before the final bosses. And allows you to just enjoy some fantastic music in the game. And you've got a choice between getting these emeralds or doing what I used to do and doing what I can do and searching for all the um, for the rubies. So satisfying. I love that. Because of the password save feature, you can just go bang and click that password save and you can just, you can just play that level to chill yourself out. Anyway, right, right. So these are the penultimate levels on the game now. So here's, we're fighting Jafar and then we're fighting the genie. So he's a sorcerer here. And it explains the story to you. And he's that. I love this little magic carpet and the little story it explains to you as you go through. Just think it's awesome. Even in writing. Even in writing looks mint, I think. enemies on the game then. Oh, I can't do it. I can't just eat the bread. Oh, piss off. Hench. He's been on a my protein website then. Torture device? Why Chinese? Obviously, it's an Arabic torture device, but you know. Cunning snakes sticking off the wall as well. Oh, they're cunning. Probably not that cunning. If they were cunning, then you wouldn't see them sticking off the wall. They'd just attack you through the hole. Yeah, stupid snakes. Stupid snakes. Do you know something? That's something I've never noticed on this game. As you climb the stairs, in the background there's another set of stairs going down. I've only just seen that. See, there's always something new you find on this game. Do 
That's it. That's what reminds me of it. See these skulls? I think there's a level in, Disney, in Mickey's Wild Adventures um, where these skulls get dropped in the attack. What Niaga is dropping there. And you get chased by these skulls. I think I could be wrong on that, but I think I, I don't. I don't. I think. But there's, there's some loose connection like that. I love this as well. This is quite cool. See, <laughs> like bear invites, but we're jumping on the lamp. So there's like there's more than one way to kill enemies and stuff, and it's just I don't know. Ah, just a box. Can't remember this is the final yeah, I think this might be the final bonus level. It's interesting. I've been playing this for 40 minutes according to that now. So it must be 45 minutes. You could probably you could do a speed run. Probably a lot faster than what I've done, not get any items. And not die, because I died twice as well. But I think maybe about 40, about 45 minutes to usually complete this and might be a little bit longer on this which is a shame for the video but there you go, you watched the Super Adventure Island and that was 45 minutes I've got some extra footage as well, I might not put the extra footage in just because of the um, I might save that extra footage up for another video because you don't want them being too long lad there's that many distractions. Any of you watched this entire video? Oh, thanks so much, honestly. Like 45 minutes of your life or 50 minutes, <clears throat> you're devoting to listening to me and watching me playing the game, which is awesome. So thank you so so much. I really really appreciate it. I do. And I do that. I'll sit that. That's why I like to make them short and sweet. Um, I've got some other ideas. I'm gonna do my favorite wrestling games as well. That should be a good one. Yeah, uh, because I'm a big wrestling game collector. The thing is, some wrestling games I find so difficult, such a pain. It like, but I'll go into that later because I think my favourite wrestling games are my favourite due to their beauty, beautiful simplicity. Which is why I'm not massive or wasn't massive on the new Fifas until very recently because I've just gone into FIFA 20 and I fucking love it. Um, basically because I put the Put the tackling on legacy tackling, um, but I just absolutely love that game. I think it's amazing. You know, when when people say they do the same product over and over again, yes, they've got a point with that. But they are adding stuff, and um, yeah, they're innovative. Man. Get the meat. Oh shit! Oh god. Fuck. There's a weird thing that can happen on that. If you pull the wrong levers, it just goes around in a circle for ages. Right. Here we go. Now, I think this is... Yeah, I'm fighting Jafar now. In this thing, yo. Right. Penultimate boss. I know you don't just jump on him three times. It's about five or six. And the, by far the hardest bit about this is these fuckers. Oh. See that? He just wants me to get hit and it, it's just fucking nightmare piss off. Yes, here we go. You can do that, you can jump on him and get him, it's just quite difficult to do. <laughs> like that's gonna work. <laughs> I 
have to count how many times I jump on him. I've never actually figured out how many times I need to jump on him. Oh, go away. Say yes, because he can be a bit of a pain in the ass. That right. So it's now on forty-five minutes. So usually by the time I beat the final boss, which is the snake, I've done this in forty-five minutes. I can just chill and watch it. But I died twice, so it'll take a little bit longer. So please forgive me for not putting the other footage. Pardon me, the other footage up because I want to try and make the video quite a little bit shorter. It's weird in the sense that I think the final boss is not the hardest boss in the game. I think the hardest boss in the game is the one I've just fought. But it's just beautiful, this. Beautiful may be the wrong words. I'm fighting the fucking cobra. See, I don't know if they're meant to be snake eggs or what. One thing that definitely makes this game easier, and if you want to make it harder, try and do it without having any uh, parachutes, because the parachutes make this game fucking ten times easier. So that might be a challenge for yourself, actually doing it without a parachute. I don't think I've ever completed it without a parachute. Yes! I think you can fall into the air. Uh, Fire, it's not going to damage it, I just always get a thing about avoiding it. This suspenseful music here is sick, I think. You thought you could outwit the most powerful being on Earth. Oh, I went to watch um, The Empire Strikes Back with Liverpool Retro Gamer. And actually, I my mum last night and it was boss. I wish I wasn't tired. But yeah, it was it was really good. <clears throat> I never thought I'd see like an original Star Wars in the cinema. Oh, it was brilliant. Go and support your local cinema. I'm not talking the Odeon and all that. If you've got a local community cinema, go and support it. And su support your local businesses, man. The absolute... Power! The universe is mine to command, to control! Wait. And that is basically the end. So he goes round and you know the story. And I'll leave the story playing, just for a little bit of satisfaction for you. But that's the last that you're actually playing in the game. So that's Aladdin. Right, that is Aladdin on uh, the Capcom version of Aladdin on the Super Nintendo. And it's a beautiful, beautiful game. And I love it. And if you get a chance, pick up a copy or however you want to play it, whatever medium you want to play it, and just sit there, invest a bit of time, and enjoy it, man. It's brilliant. And if you've only played the Sega version, definitely pick this up and play that. Because I've only played this version. Well, I've played the other one, but I've never completed the other version. And I have bought it, and I'm going to complete it. Because we need to broaden our minds and our horizons. Right, we know the story. So, I'm going to shoot off, I'm going to say goodbye, and leave you with this. Look after yourself. All the best. <laughs>